Welcome to the tutorial on RainSphere, an integrated system for global satellite precipitation data and information. The precipitation information provided by RainSphere covers two aspects. First is the historical satellite rainfall data, Persian CDR, which is produced by CHRS at UC Irvine and released through NOAA National Centers for Environmental Information. Persian CDR is a high-resolution data set available at a daily time step and 25 kilometer spatial resolution for over three decades. Second, for those interested in model projections, is the presentation of IPCC CMIP-5 future precipitation projections. This tutorial covers various features of the system, beginning with an overview of the RainSphere interface. On the left panel, there are four main sections. These allow users to choose desired map layers to display, choose whether to look at historical precipitation estimates from satellites or future precipitation projections from models, visualize global precipitation for any time period within the display, and query statistics for a specified region and time. A location reference map is also provided for easy navigation, as well as a search bar to pinpoint specific locations. The base map can be adjusted according to viewing preferences, and the map itself is interactive for location selection. Several varieties of map layers are available to aid in data viewing and selection. For human-defined boundaries, we can display country borders. Or, at the finer scale, we can display other political boundaries such as states and provinces. Hydrologically, we have four levels of spatial divisions starting with the largest, which is continental basins then down to major river basins. We can go to even finer divisions with the tributaries option, and all the way down to individual watersheds. Now for the rain layers. As an example, we'll take a look at historical precipitation. Let's turn on our country map layer for reference and make sure the data type is set to historical. For this exercise, we'll look at total precipitation for a time period, so we select the accumulative button. Now let's put in a time period, one year of historical data. We hit submit and get a complete global picture of the total precipitation for the year 1983. With this and any rain layer, right clicking on a point displays the estimated precipitation value of that pixel. We can also toggle on or off any rain layer for which we have previously searched. The automated statistics capabilities of RainSphere is one of the most powerful features of the system. Let's start with an example of querying annual statistics for a country. Under our Query By menu, we select Country and a yearly date type. Let's go ahead and select the entire historical period for evaluation. Now we click on a country using the interactive map and see the automatically generated report with basic statistics. We can toggle on or off the linear trend and average markers, depending on what we want to visualize. A man candle test of significance is shown with each trend. In this case, the United States shows a decreasing trend in precipitation for the entire historical period. However, this trend is not statistically significant. For other examples, China shows virtually no trend, and Uzbekistan shows an increasing trend for the same time period. We can also include the temperature of our location of interest on our graph and use the mouse to hover over a point on any plot displayed for an estimated value. We have the luxury of exporting the chart data to a CSV file or an image file. If we like, we can view the individual rain images for our area to get a sense of spatial pattern changes through time. Again, hovering with the mouse over the precipitation images displays the estimated precipitation amount for a pixel in that image. Additional location-specific information is provided in these reports. From these, we can see distributions of aridity, land cover, and elevation. To grab the entire report, click the Export button on the bottom. We can perform a similar analysis for a political division query. For an example, let's look at a complete historical period for the state of California. In this case, California shows no significant annual precipitation trend. What we can see very quickly is how dry the year 2013 is. In fact, it had less than half the average annual rainfall for the state. Now, let's quickly look at a location query. 
Again, we will select the yearly rainfall for the entire available data period. Begin typing a location in the search bar and locations matching your search will begin to populate the list below. Click on the correct match to drop a pin on the map. Clicking on the pin will then bring up the statistical report for your location. Switching now to future mode, we look at IPCC model projections. Select the future IPCC projection button to examine future precipitation projections up until the year 2100. Visualization features are largely the same as historical observations, except now we notice a visualization of one year, for example, brings up three data options. These correspond to three different carbon emission scenarios, all of which can be downloaded individually. We will now step through a major basin statistics query example for future projections. For the example, we select major basin as our query type, and for something different, let's check out how precipitation for a single month is projected to change from now until 2100. If we click on the Mississippi River Basin, now we see plots for three emission scenarios. In this case, the low emission scenario suggests a decreasing precipitation trend, and the stabilization and high emission scenario suggest an increasing precipitation trend for this basin. Thank you for watching this tutorial on RainSphere.